Okay, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Tour Podcast. Today, we have ourselves a, a guest on the show today, a very special guest who's pretty much done it all in the Han industry, man. I mean, he's he's gone from uh, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor to Not Scary Farm, Halloween Horror Nights, uh, Haunted Hayride, 17th Door. Have you made your way to Six Flags yet or not yet? No, Six Flags is the only one I haven't been to. Not well, yet. Well, I mean, not scare-wise. Yeah. Um, this is Tim. If you guys don't know, this guy has done it all, man. This guy has a large career in the haunt industry. So let's just let's just jump right into it. First and foremost, man, with all this scare acting and stuff, it's got to inspire you to to want to do your own stuff, right? Your own characters and and whatnot, right? Yeah, I mean, I started back in 2013 and scared every single season up until last year. This year, I don't know what's going to happen, though. Um, I haven't actually created my own character until recently, though. Um, so back in 2016, I was at Dark Harbor for the first time, and they put me in a maze called Circus as a mime. And one of the nights I was about to head to work, and I had just taken a shower and stuff, and there was a rubber duck in my bathtub. Not mine. Don't know where it came from. <laughs> so I asked around the house, and my mom's friend was like, oh, that's mine. And I was just like, oh, okay. Well, can I take it to work with me? And he was like, why? And I was like, I don't know. Just to have it, because it'd be funny. And so he said, sure. So I get in the makeup chair. They throw my makeup on me, and I'm like, this would be fun- kind of funny. So I asked the makeup artist if she would paint the duck to match me, and she did. That's hilarious. So the entire rest of the season, I had the rubber duck, you know, was holding it up to people and saying, get him, or mm-hmm. whatever. And it worked for a long time. And then there's this company called, uh, what the heck is that? I forget. But they make custom suits. And so I had to make me this thing. Back. So it's a giant. Wow. Costume thing, and it's covered in rubber duckies, obviously. That is dope. Back. You quack me up. I love it. So funny. And right? this picture actually was my, a picture that my friend drew of my rubber duck. That is um, awesome. Let me see if I can pull up the drawing that my friend did of my that is that is a dope costume though my friend that is that is <laughs> really cool i like that it's like a it's like your own spin on a michael myers jumpsuit but you just kind of changed the colors and everything i loved it yeah I changed it drastically that's dope let's see if my laptop will work <laughs> But yeah, one of my friends who goes to the haunts like every year, she'll randomly pick a person who she likes the character of and draw like a cartoon version. Nice. And um, someone sent me the link for this company and they make a bunch of random stuff. And so I sent them that picture and said, hey, would you be able to draw this whole thing? And they were just like, "Mm, that'd be a little bit tough. So but instead, it looks like they, they've gotten most of it done, though, right? Yeah. So instead of just doing the entire thing, including my, like me, they yeah. just did the rubber duck, and it still came out amazing. Right. Uh, my laptop's bugging. Okay, let's see if I can get it to... Just because you saw the, the duck on the back. Yeah. Actually, like the picture that actually inspired that. Right. I know I have it on my Facebook somewhere. And and the face makeup that goes with it, is it more of like a mime kind of thing too? Or are you doing your own kind of spin on? The duck thing? Your, 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 a part of your costume? What, what would be the, the your makeup for it? Honestly, don't even know. I haven't thought that far ahead. All right, I get you. There it is. Okay, so. Here we go. Okay, so here's, here's the rubber duck. Um, can you see it? Yeah. Cool. And then here's the original picture. The original OG. So that's you. That that she. Okay, she's a very talented artist. Uh, 
to yeah, draw. Yeah, it's amazing. That is awesome. Yeah, she made me look rad. That um, is really cool. Let me see if I can find the picture that she used to draw that. Uh, giving yeah, that Nikki is, a shout out here. That <laughs> is dope, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I love so does she it. do that as a side business too? It, it, you know, drawing and stuff? Um, I want to say yes. Yeah, because she can make some serious money, man. Like, she can get some good commissions off that. Oh, yeah. So here's the original picture that she took. You of the mime and the duck. There's the painted duck right there. Yep. I love it. And so, yeah, this clown character that I'm doing, basically just that. Yeah. That mime right there just kind of, like... <laughs> Spawned the, the whole suit and the whole character. I like that, man. Yeah, so, it's basically just, like... I don't know. It's it's crazy. It's yeah, man. Fruit and it's got rubber duckies spray painted all over it, and then this beautiful masterpiece on the back. Yeah, that is awesome, man. I like that. So, you did mention. Uh, I guess we can dive a little into your haunt crew right here. You mentioned Queen Mary Dark Harbor. So, tell us a little bit more about uh, your time over at Queen Mary Dark Harbor, man. How was that? So, twenty sixteen was the first year I did that. Like you saw, I was a mime in the circus, but I actually started out the first night in um, something called Sideshow, Sideshow Freak Show, something like that. It was an upcharge of like 10 bucks or something. And you basically got to walk through it, and there was like a bearded lady and like just a bunch of Sideshow Freaks. Yeah. They had me at the entrance basically just con like convincing people to come in. Right. Um, that was opening day. The next night, I came in, clocked in, and David Wally, who's the casting director, was like, hey, Tim, come here. I was like, what's up? And he goes, I'm moving here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you, you're you doing great in there, but I want to like let you do more. So you're staying that character, but you're moving over to circus. Nice. I'm just like, cool. That very same night, I got Scare Actor of the Night, which nice. is like, it's just a thing. Like at the end of the night, they give you a t-shirt that says top performer on it. And then you get like a free meal card or something. Nice. So yeah, my first day in circus, I ended up with that. And then at the end of the year, I got rookie of the year, which was awesome. Um, Badass, dude. And then the next season I was in dead rise and that kind of came to a halt because it says some stuff that I shouldn't have, but I mean, <laughs> sailors talk, you yeah. know, and so that's what I was. Hey, man, it's called it's method. Good. You got to bring the character to life. <laughs> and I did the wrong thing with the wrong person around it. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about your time at Not Scary Farm, man. What'd you do there? So 2013, I was in um, Uncle Willie's Slaughterhouse, which was okay. the, it was amazing Camp Snoopy, like right when you walk in there. Right. There was that, um, that little kitty version of Supreme Scream. It's like a mailbox thing, and it goes up and down and stuff. Right. My maze was in there. And I uh, was a... Uh, dock worker so like construction work like yeah like a white house guy but i was a cannibal so right it was like a table with intestines and like a person slid in there and i convinced stephanie to do it a couple nights and so she was like laying there and i had her intestines wrapped around my fist and i was like i don't know but that was a year i had no clue what i was doing so right. i was kind of just like okay <laughs> just jumping right into the pool man that's it yeah basically and then 2014 I was in Infected, the Bravo side. So nice. the first row of it, when they had, like, the park split. Right. So it was, like, Bravo was one side and Alpha was the other. Right. So I was a zombie there. And I uh, basically just got shot with laser tag guns all night long. And it wasn't the funnest. Nice. So you op you were part of the opening of Special Ops Infected, right? I was. That, that's, I that, my that my is, I've seen. Closet. And I've seen those jerseys, yeah, because I know a lot of people that have those jerseys. Those are really cool. Do you, see, do you want me to grab it? Yeah, grab it out, man. Those are cool jerseys, man. I like those. But Special Ops Infected, probably – I never got to experience the Camp Snoopy one. Really wanted to. But it was probably one of my favorite mazes of all time at any haunt. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, those things are dope, man. Those are really yeah, – I don't really wear it, though, because it's uh, complicated stuff. Right. 
No, I, that, I think that is probably one of the best well-designed mazes of all time. I mean... And some people was cool for when it was. When it, when it first opened, it was like kind of like a free roam kind of thing, which I liked. I mean, they had you on track, but it was mostly like, you know, it was in a land, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then, of course, they, they moved it over to the Mystery Lodge and kind of limited it, but they still gave you that freedom to use the gun and everything, which I thought was really cool. But I, I've always thought the concept for that was cool, and I don't, I don't see why no, more parks incorporate it into a maze of some sort. I mean, I, I figure now with COVID, it'd be a little bit more hard, but, um, you know, prior to that, I think it, it's just an amazing concept that people should probably look at including into more haunts. I mean... I get it, but at the same time, it's like, we don't really have fun just dying every couple seconds. Like, that was my right. major downfall, was I didn't really like the fact of just like, oh, I get to stand up and be like, oh, right. boom, 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 boom. oh fall over, stand up, do it again. Right. Um, that wasn't my thing. I more so like to just be creepy and just get up in people's space and make them uncomfortable and, you know, you know right. that's their life. No, I get you. I think at a character point of view, it's uh, a little bit more uh, difficult to uh, accomplish the job that you're trying to do as far as scaring people. Um, and, I, and I can see that from a character point of view. Um, so, Not Scary Farm, you've done that for a little bit. You've done some Dark Harbor. Uh, talk a little bit about your time at Haunted Hayride, man. I know I understood you did a couple nights there as well. So, what year was it? 2017? Yeah. 2017 um the whole dark harbor situation happened and they let me go like the day before halloween right i was like whatever about it so the next night um one of the girls from dark harbor messaged me and was like hey i know you're not in dark harbor anymore but do you want to go scare at the hayride i know somebody and i was like sure so i hit them up and then they were just like yeah i come through and so i went they made me a clown in the little prison area i don't know if you've been to it but there's a there's a hayride, obviously, and then there's a part where it turns around a corner and there's a bunch of animal cages because it's right. like the LA. Well, they had me in a prison jumpsuit with a clown mask, and I basically was inside of the cages, would open the door, run out, jump on the hayride, and mess with people. How, how fun was that, man? I, I've seen that firsthand of the whole hayride situation. It's a very interesting, um, a very interesting thing as far as a haunt goes. How how fun was that for you? It was interesting for sure, but yeah. like, I don't know. It was strange because you just basically had to wait and look. And then when the hair was coming and then you're like, all right, let's get ready. Right. But when there wasn't any hair rides coming, we basically just stood there and talked. Yeah. And it, was, it was me, Andrew, and like six other people in that area or something. It was like small. Right. And so, yeah, we basically just jumped on the hayride, and there was a couple of times where my foot almost got ran over. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Luckily um, for that thing, it goes, like, super slow, so you can actually get time to move your foot or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't go very fast. It's just, like, what, 10 miles per hour? If, if that, that yeah. It's going, like, really freaking slow, yeah. Yeah. And they told us, like, don't jump on the hayride, but, like, everyone did. And oh, yeah. Like, management came by on a golf cart, and then we were just like, hey, what, how's it going? Are you guys good? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Ride came, and we, like, jumped on it, and we just, like, looked at them, and they didn't say anything. So we are just like, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's uh, – last year was the first year I ever went to it, and they, they did a that, – that was an interesting thing I had never seen. I've always seen it on YouTube, but I've never seen it, like, on – in person or anything. So it was really cool to, to experience that. Um, so I always found it interesting to see uh, what scare actors actually think of like jumping on and, and waiting and how that works. Cause yeah, it is pretty much a waiting game with that, with that attraction at least. And it's, it's cool too. Cause you had to like figure out what you're going to say. Cause you could like, I don't know. I found myself talking about what they had on or like what they were doing. Right. I remember this one guy had like a bag of hot Cheetos or something. And I was like, you know, those are bad for you. Right. <laughs> and he was like, what, what are you talking about? And I was like, you're going to be pooping fire for a while. <laughs> And it was just funny. I'd be stupid. <laughs> right. No, I think that's <laughs> cool, man. Stuff like that. And then, yeah. uh, who was it? A guitar player for some band. I can't think of who it was, but he was on the hayride one of the nights. I did it, I think, three days that year. But yeah, there was like a celebrity. I can't remember who it was. But Right. That was uh, dope. As soon as he left, management rolled up on their golf cart and was like, hey, 
what's the, such and such was just on that and we're just like okay okay <laughs> back to our regular scheduled program <laughs> um so from hayride done a little bit of time at 17 thor man um that is a haunt for some reason i will not touch um it, but i don't true. know tell me about it man so there's a thing called the safe word and right. basically um it's mercy so there's that and then there's glow sticks that you wear on your neck but basically what it is is you line up and it's uh it's behind a dollar store, like Dollar Tree or something. Right. And um, basically, there's a bunch of different doors you go in. There's a red light and a green light above both of them. And you basically just wait till the light turns green, and then you go on through the door. Something happens. And, yeah, if you say mercy, then you and your group get thrown out. Damn. Um, I met Heather, who's in charge of it, through Chris who I met doing a YouTube event in 2016. Okay. Where they they booked me and like probably 10 to 12 other people to dress as zombies for a red carpet thing. Right. And Chris happened to be working that. And he used to be um, part of 17th Doors Management. He's off doing something else now. But um, yeah, I came into 17th Door around, uh, like somehow with that. And um, I did it like four nights total how was that man how was that experience compared to other haunts it was fun because i got to just like grab people but it wasn't like super aggressive you know right like, um one of the guys from knots actually his <laughs> he came in and my job for the night was supposed to be in charge of a tesla coil so like those things that electrically you right so there's a steel cage and then inside of it the tesla coil and then there's a switch on either side. The guy on the other side of it was like hitting the switch when I had the person and vice versa. So like if he had somebody, I'd turn the switch on. If I had somebody, he would. So this guy from Nods comes in and I'm just like, <laughs> and so I grabbed him and I was just like, come here. And he goes, why? And it was like, because I said so or something like that. I pushed him against the fence, wrapped my hands into the fence, hugged the dude and told him to turn it on. He was like, why, why, you're going to feel it. And I was like, do I care? I want to make this guy's night hell. And he's like, why well, me? And I, and I whispered his name in his ear. And he was like, that's not okay. <laughs> and, he and, I told him there, and after like probably 15 seconds, he started screaming it. Like he screamed mercy so many times. Shit, man. And then I let him go. And he's like, fuck you. And like that. And then I saw him after the night was over and I had like my makeup kind of off. It was still there. And then I had my contacts in, but I had on my shirt still. He walks out and he goes, no wonder. <laughs> I'm like, hey. <laughs> it was really funny. That's um, hilarious, dude. But I got like seven or eight mercies that night. And um, the people that scared with me were just like, yeah, dude, good job. That was, that was great. Right. And then I did it the following year a couple nights but i was a different character entirely they had me behind a drop down window there was a chalkboard right so essentially what would happen was um i would have the chalkboard up and then I, like before they get to it i'd come around the corner and i'd be like hey, hey, hey hold on <laughs> this chalkboard right here if you said mercy at all write down how many times or whatever and they're just like, oh, okay, cool. And they grab a piece of chalk and get behind the window and drop it, and they scream and take off running. <laughs> dude, great scare right there. I love that, dude. Yeah, it was that, super fun. That is just one haunt. I, I don't know. I think it's just me not liking to be touched, but I've heard some good things about it. It's not like, of course, a completely like nuts about the whole, like what they do and stuff. So that's something I can respect. They have, they have of course, their boundaries. And they have boundaries, but if you yeah. let them, they will push them. Oh, yeah. Like, there's a guy named Seth that did Dark Harbor with me the two years I was there. He went to 17th Door one of the years where they had a barber room. And you basically sat in a barber chair and they had clippers. And they would, like, shave off one of your eyebrows or, like, give you a reverse freaking mustache or whatever. Right. He sat in the chair. They buzzed his entire head. That's great, dude. 
I had heard about that story. That's like the famous barber story that I always hear um, about 17 Thor, about the, the guy who got his head all shaved off, man. That is. Yeah, that was Seth. He worked at Dark Harbor and he showed up the next. He showed up one of the nights at Dark Harbor with his head buzz. And we're all like, what the heck happened to you? And he's like, 17 Thor, I sat in the chair. He's like, like, 17 Thor happened to me. That's what happened. No. <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah, man. Yeah, stuff like that. And then they had like one year where they had like a plate of roaches and you could eat one if you wanted oh. to. And I went through one night with a guy. Um, I forget what it was, but they had something. And he just grabbed one and ate it. And they were all just like, we weren't going to ask you to do that. But <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, this guy's crazy. Yep. <laughs> it's nuts, man. Um, yeah, that's that's a haunt, too, that, uh, that's that been on my list of, of how they would do that uh, post-COVID. You know what I mean? Like. I know that's a big thing right now. As far as I've heard, it's still happening, I think. Right. I don't know for sure, though. Yeah, that's that's just a haunt that I know it's very hands-on with people and, and of course, with a lot of the stuff that they do. So that's why I, I want to know how they would uh, COVID guideline that one. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know because they're handsy. Yeah, that's that's like, my everyone that thing. comes in, they get touched like not like crazy or anything. Like they'll grab you and just be like come here and like grab you by the collar of your shirt and pull you in close and like right. smell you or something. It's weird. That is uh, no, they they but they do a very good job as far as set designs and stuff go. I think uh, from what I've seen like in the outside and and like images and stuff, it does look really dope. Um, so they, they they know how to they know really how to to build a uh, a haunt, man. So I, I, that I that's really cool, cool man. I I, I may. If I want to toughen up one year, try it out. I'm just the guy who don't like to be touched very much, so it's like. Well, <laughs> how about this? If if 17th door happens and you go, I'll come with you. Sweet, let's do it. Cool. All right. I'll set it up and I'll come with you and stuff. And don't say mercy though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Honestly, I've never mercyed out of there. Like I, no, I didn't even come close. My friend CJ works there and. They gave him a taser and he like tased me right in the sack one night. I was like, oh. yeah, that's nuts. Um, literally, yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, all right, so I saved my favorite of one of my favorite events for last two. Um, that's Halloween Horror Nights. Um, you've done some time at Horror Nights, man, and you got quite the resume there, man. Talk to us, Weird. yeah. Talk to us all the all the other things you've done at Horror Nights, man, because. From the stuff you were sharing with me, I was really impressed that I probably ran into you a night or two and, and not even known it. So 2015 was the first year I did it. Uh, that was kind of accidental. Like, I, I hadn't planned it. So as you heard earlier, I did knots for 13 and 14. And then 14 was a really awful year. So uh, I wanted to go somewhere else. And my friend Chad hits me up and goes, hey, do you have a place to haunt at this year? And I was like, nope. He goes, all right, well, Horror Nights is still having people, so sign up. I went, signed up, got casted. Six foot tall white guy. Who did that make me? Michael Mike. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I it was it was really fun. Like, my first year ever doing that, getting to be one of the most notorious serial killers out right. there. The shape, man. It was a win in my book. Right? Check off the... the uh the bucket list right there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, what else? And then 2017, after Dark Harbor ended, I got lucky enough to go scare at Horror Nights for three days. Right. <laughs> um, I played Ash Williams one night, which was awesome. Yep. Got to like another, another another bucket list character right there. Put a chainsaw on your hand and everything. Yep. <laughs> I'm Ash Williams, and I'm here to save the day yep. again. <laughs> And then I was Jason one night. Another bucket list. Another bucket list, man. You just got to play on all the Terra iconic Tram. roles. On Terra Tram. Nice. That was fun. I got to kill a bunch of people. And then I was the baby face killer in Blumhouse. Okay. Is, yeah. Yeah. You know it, it's actually, Happy yeah. Death Happy Death Day has gotten some recognition over the years. I, I, I enjoy them. They're good movies. I don't think I saw the second one, but the first one was, eh, it was all right. Yeah. Um, and then 2018, I went to Horror Nights the entire season. Nice. And got put in a scary zone for the first time ever. Nice. 
Which was Toxic Tunnel. Toxic Tunnel, our favorite, favorite, with multiple X's, favorite scare zone. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Toxic Tunnel. I mean, I get it. We're a bunch of crazy son of a bitches. Like, we really are. Like, yeah. they, they put us in there, and we're all just like, okay, crack. <laughs> it's, it's just funny, because, what, the first year I was in Tunnel, we had 32 32 of us, I want to say. Wow. And then last year we had uh, 24. Last year we had 24. Wow. So yeah. we, we lost a couple guys. But um, yeah, my first year in Tunnel, I was a firefighter uh, with a giant red axe. You nice. Know, if you've been through Tunnel, you know how we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Tunnel. <laughs> <Come right. laughs> yep. Yeah. I especially love Tunnel last year because they included more like Psycho Billy and and, and Paul. Oh, I loved our soundtrack last year. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. Um, but yeah, I had a, I had a red axe, and basically got to do that. And then one of the nights, my friend Chad that I was talking about earlier that initially got me into Hornets, right. um, hit me up one night and was like, "Hey, my double's not going to be here. Uh, do you want to replace him?" So you can stay with me. And I was just like, dude, yes. So I got to work one night and um, Monster Masquerade is Dracula. Nice. That was fun. Was uh, it? Yeah. I mean, I only did it to one night, so I had no clue what I was doing character-wise. And I didn't right. have a prop. Had no props. So all I basically had to do was like walk and weave in and out of the, the crowds. Yeah. And it was funny. One of my friends who might watch this uh, was on break, standing off to the side watching me do my thing because they had never seen me like scared before. Right. This guy comes in with a tripod, <laughs> has his phone connected to the tripod, starts to set up to like record, and we had like a little thing right there. I peek around right. the corner and all I did was go like that, and the tripod and his phone hit the floor. Oh man! I felt bad, but at the same time I was cracking up so much. Oh yeah, dude. Like. I glanced over, and two of the friends that I had made that night were like, <laughs> and I was, it was my first set, and I was only out for like 10 minutes. <laughs> it was insane how fast I got someone to just boom. Right? Just floored them. Those are my floored. favorite stories, man. I love watching and hearing people get floored, man. I got to see a couple of them at Knott's last year, and it was just hilarious. Yeah. Um, no, watching people get floored is is literally like, you have to see it in person. Like it's funny to watch on film, but when you see it in person, it's 10 times better. Oh yeah. And yeah. then the very next night, which was the last night of the season, I think, um, I went back to tunnel and this thing that my supervisors were doing was basically Xbox that you meant on box awards. So the right. right button that said like random stuff. And one of them was do jumper. I hadn't gotten a single pin that entire season. The last night, the day after Mr. Camera Guy fell, same thing with some dude in the tunnel. I was I was looking at one of the other scare actors like he had some girl like running and I was laughing and I'm like ah. I felt like a presence behind me because as scare actors are just humans in general. If someone's near you, you can feel it. It's like a weird sense. Right. You know? So I was standing there and I was like, there's someone behind me. I took my prop and it just went like that. Dude goes boom. <laughs> I look over and my supervisor's right there and he goes, oh, here we go. And he hands me a dude dropper pin and I'm just like Achievement unlocked. <laughs> I yeah. love that dude. That you guys play like that's cool. It, it really motivates you to really want to scare just to get those buttons, man. Like I would be fun. I would be going try hard on that at that point. If I'm getting achievements left and right, like that's how already how I am playing Xbox. Like I love getting achievements, but if I know that I'm gonna get a button for it. <coughs> for it, go on. Yeah, there was a bunch. was like dude dropper. Um, I think one of them was like, "Can I get a high R or something like that?" <laughs> one of them was like, "Nope." And then one of them was like crowd chaser or something like. I don't know. I forget. Right. But there were just like random, random things. Right. And then another thing they did that was pretty fun was they had a hat with a bunch of like characters in it. And they basically were like, okay, so if you're interested in doing it, grab one. So I ended up grabbing two one night, and one of them was 
one of them said, you're afraid of bees and children. I love it, dude. So <laughs> it was funny. So like most of the night I was running around going, ah, like I had bees around me. Yeah. And then every time I saw a kid, I ran away from them. <laughs> there was a point where a little girl that was probably like seven chased me all the way through the tunnel. Oh, man. Because I saw her, I was just like, no. And I'm like, I, I pointed and was like, get away from me. And she like came closer and I just booked it and she chased me and it was fun. It was adorable. hilarious, man. They, they play along with it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I really love about the yeah. star acting in general. That's awesome, man. So, and then last year, yeah. I got put in tunnel again, which I didn't want to happen. It did. I mean, there's the only haunt where you really get a saying where you're at is not. Right. Like, uh, Horror Nights, you get put where you get put. Dark Harbor, same situation. Um, Six Flags, I think it's the same as, like, everywhere else. Um, but, yeah. So, they threw me in tunnel again. I was just like, whatever about it. But then I saw who my cast was, and it was like 30% people from the year before. Right. Which was cool. I'm like, all right, I can dig it. Um, so I did that the entire season, except for two days. So one of the nights, uh, I switched with a guy, and I worked upstairs as nice. a female character. Oh, wow. So I played the geisha if you went to Horror Nights last year. Right. Did you go? I did. Multiple nights. Do so you know the girl with the fan? Yes. I did that once. That was you, man. One of the nights, and it was the first day in October. Um, the first Thursday in October that we had. And then the last Saturday, I scared as a red-faced demon. Oh, nice. So the he's in like all black and Right. Yeah. How it's like awesome. uh, I forget what the prop is, but yeah. So I was that guy. And then yeah, back to tunnel for the last day. Um trying to think of anything funny. Oh, so one of the first night I was upstairs, uh <laughs> I don't know if you follow wrestling at all. Oh yeah, I love wrestling, dude. Okay, cool. So the first night I was up there I heard two two guys talking and I'm just like, Why do they sound familiar? So I turn and I look. And it happened to be Zack Ryder. Wow. And, and he's Slater. Wow. They were up there together drinking. That's awesome. Getting beers from the track cart. That's hilarious. And like, oh. And, and so I came up and I just started messing with them. And <laughs> Zack Ryder is a coward. Yeah. Like, I will put that out there right now. He's a chicken. <laughs> Comes up as funny. a tough guy and he's a big chicken in real life, man. Come on. He was scared. And I'm a girl, mind you. That that's hilarious, <laughs> man. I, I love hearing stories uh based around uh haunts, but I really like hearing stories when you get to interact with celebrities, man, because Yeah, they're always fun time. You look at them as one way and then you hear these stories and it's a whole different way, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got to uh headbang with Slash last year. He came through tunnel and like that's four or five cool. of us saw him and we're just like Oh, what the? And yeah. so I ran up and I was like, his head pain. He started doing it, and then yeah, we all were. It was fun. That's cool, man. Slash, man, of course. Uh, Universal Monsters, man. Clowns 3D. That guy's freaking made his mark over there at Halloween Horror Nights, man. Love yeah. having Slash the event. It's always a, it's always a little treat, right there. Definitely. Anything the, else? The fact um, that that guy finds time to make a soundtrack for uh, for a maze is just beautiful, though. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Anything else? Okay. So, uh, if you've been to Midsummer Scream, I have. So I did that every year except for 2019. Okay. What well, What was the absence for 2019 for? They just didn't hit me up to use me for it oh, okay. for whatever reason. But I modeled for Bone Art Effects with Larry Bones and Cheryl. Okay. They basically threw me in a prosthetic and it was like themed to whatever right. they were doing. So the first year of it, I want to say was 2016, I think. Right. And so they had me as like a slimy scientist. Nice. I don't think I have the costume anymore, but I had a lot put on with 
UV paint and a prosthetic that was like a melting face and I had UV contacts in. Awesome. And I was inside the Hall of Shadows messing with people. Um, what was after that? Okay. So the following year, the theme was zombies. Right. And so we were all just like zombies and crazy prosthetics. And I was dressed up like Steve from Blue's Clues, which was hilarious. <laughs> I had tan pants and a green striped shirt. Steve then, from Blue's Clues. I love it, man. Pretty crazy zombie makeup on. Um, the following year, it was Holidays in Hell was the theme. Okay. So I talked to my makeup artist, and we decided on Cupid. So she threw me in a prosthetic with horns. Nice. I had white pants, a white shirt, a red vest, and then wings. Nice. Um, did I have anything else? Oh, we were talking about possibly getting me like a bow and arrow, but instead of like bows, it was going to have like hearts on the end. So that I know it was know. more like understandable. Right. That didn't work out because there were some complications with my makeup artist and she like didn't come. So I had to find one at the last second. Right. Um, that's, yeah, that's basically it for my scratching career. Man, it's, it's such a huge career that you've had and you continue to try to evolve and, and try to just go to different places. That's cool that you like to kind of travel anywhere. What are some dream haunts that you really just want to go and scare act at? In a perfect world, I would love to go scare at Four Nights Orlando. Right. But my main thing that I would just love to do is go scare in Salem. Right. Whether it's like a giant maze or like, I don't know, just anything in Salem would be amazing. Right. Like just being there during the Halloween season. Like, Definitely, yeah. That's one of my goals right there is right. to just somehow make my way up there, find a haunt to scare out for like a night or two even. Right. I'd be scared. I've heard I'd even like scared. Germany and places like that have some pretty extreme haunts out overseas. Like those are those look really cool. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard much about out of the country haunts, but um, Yeah. I don't know. I've like heard of haunts everywhere. There's just places all over the place that are like let's just say this every state every every state in the united states has some sort of haunt whether it be a hayride whether it be a home haunt of some sort like everyone does something so yeah definitely yeah but no i i agree man it it would be cool to kind of just travel the world and and see all the different haunts and just yeah one of my friends does that i would love to but yeah busy guy over here Right. <laughs> um, that's cool, man. I, I, I hope to see you uh, out there, though, man. I, 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 it's cool that you actually go to different places to try different things and, and like to expand your haunt career. Other than well, the, different places. the whole reason for like moving around is like my living situation and the, the backstage experience I had. I'm not going to get into any of that, but right. there was like certain reasons that I went to a haunt and then I left and went to a different one and then right. left and ended up at Horror Nights. Right. Like my main reason for being at Universal is because I worked all year. Right. So I'm just like, I already work here. Might as well just stick it out. You know? Right. Plus, I've got like family there. Like, I have so many close friends at that place. Right. And so I have no desire to go anywhere besides Horror Nights right now. Nice. Um, however, if nothing opens, we'll see where I end up at this year. Right. Because, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, COVID. Appreciate you. I don't. <laughs> um, but it's like, yeah, no, man, I, I feel you. Uh, we go to Horror Nights a lot, so definitely you're going to be on our radar when we when we head out to just kind of say a quick hello and then maybe get some footage and go sure. on our way, man. Well, That's, I don't break character, so don't yeah. expect me to be like, oh, hi. No, I, I wouldn't. If I see you, I'm going to just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't expect you, man. That's that's what honestly keeps the the, the show going, man. I love that yeah. when that happens. That's awesome. Um, I Tim, mean, I'm you've had people that I know, but right, I don't, I don't really break if that makes sense. Right, like, no. if I see someone and I know them, I'll give them shit. But I love it, man. Tim, you've you've been everywhere. You've done just about almost everything over here in SoCal. Um, yeah, man, any last things you want to say before we sign off, man? Because that is just such a great career, man. Like, I don't even know where to go from there. That is just 
you were probably like the first person we've talked to who've done who's done multiple things like that. Like that's awesome. Really, I thought there was like other people that have stared everywhere. No, they're like a lot of the people we talked to have only stared at like maybe one or two places. But you have cracked the resume, man. You've been to Seventeen Thor, Hayride, Queen Mary, Knots, Halloween Horror Nights, Six Flags. Hopefully, coming soon. Nah, nah. I don't know if that's my. I don't know if I like it. I mean, right. I don't know. If that's the only place to, to scare at this year, though, I could probably see you heading out there. <laughs> Honestly, if everything closed except Fright Fest, I'd probably go there. Yeah, just to get that kind of that haunt rush in, huh? Yeah, because I'm hooked on that shit. Like, I got to scare people during fall. Right. If I don't, if I don't I'm going to be a sad panda. They, they'd be stupid not to have you, Tim. I'll tell you that right now. Sure. <laughs> It'd be stupid not to have you. But, Tim, I want to really thank you for uh, coming on the show and, and talking about your haunt career, man. It, it's been, honestly, I, I love listening to every minute of it. Uh, and I can't wait to uh, see what happens with you in the future, man. You have quite the future ahead of you, man, and, and you're still going. And I just can't wait to see you there. You know, we support you 100% what you do. We thank what you do uh, for bringing the horror to life that we get to enjoy at these events. And, uh, yeah, man, it's been honestly a pleasure. So thank you so much for uh, being on the show today, my friend. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. For sure, brother. All right. That is going to do it for today's podcast. If you guys enjoyed that, hit that like button and leave a comment below. Also, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. We got merch in the, in the description below. Check out our merch site with Miles for Podcast merch and Knights of Horror merch, East versus West merch, Maze Treatments merch, all that good stuff, face masks t-shirts all that fun stuff so check it out links in the description below of course follow us on social media at the knights of four on instagram and at knights of four on twitter uh, i'm your host anthony this is the miles for podcast my amazing guest today tim uh go follow him tim do you have are you on social media as well i am my instagram is i am underscore timber so it's t-i-m-b-u-u-r-r Sweet. And then my Facebook name is Tim Ballard. There you go. Follow him. Keep up to date of what he's doing because this guy's going to blow up, man, and you want to be there for that. All, All right, right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys soon.